Okay, the next step is that we're going to be preparing a streusel, okay? For this we're going to need uh, crushed almonds, uh, brown sugar, flour and butter, okay? Uh, the chef is going to begin to do it while I explain, okay? This is a technique that is, um, that helps a lot to have a breakable texture in the end. Okay, this technique has the main purpose to cover the gluten of the flour we're going to use and it helps us for it doesn't absorb any kind of liquids. In the end, it avoids that we have an elastic texture and we have the breakable, uh, the breakable consistent that we're looking for. This technique is especially used for dupes that are made uh, to, to, to make some pie crust, to make cookies, and to make all those kind of dupes that in the end are easy to break. So we can do this technique by hand, we can do this technique in the machine, but in this case that we have a small amount of ingredients, we're going to be making it by hand. So keep watching the process. In this case, the flavor we're going to make it is coffee and we're going to add right now at this point the coffee for it be completely, uh, completely work to get it in the doof. Okay, now after around four to five minutes of being working, we have the texture we're looking for. In this case, we have the sand texture, like a wet sand texture. And after this, we're going to uh, extend it into the tray. Okay, and we're going to put it in, into the oven to bake for around eight to 10 minutes. And after this is ready, we're going to take it away and we're going to let it cool. Sometimes when it's inside of the oven, we have to remove it a little bit because we, don't, we have to take care that the top doesn't get burned. Okay, so this is a uh, um, really um, dangerous maybe technique because if you don't take care of this, you can have a burned streusel. Okay, what we have is to have a, many, a wide variety of colors in here, so we got to take care in this in this point. After. Three minutes of being baking it, we stop the, the cooking process and just move a little bit, okay? As I told you before, because we want that the color be the most homogeneous as possible. So we're going to remove if we don't have just a burn top, okay? In this moment, just move it a little bit and we're going to take it back to the oven to finish the, the cooking method. Okay, now we're about to make the Coulier Biscuit, okay? In this moment, we have two machines here, as you can see. In one of them, we have the egg whites, and the other one, we have the egg yolks, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pour some part of sugar in each one, what it says the recipe, and we're gonna to start to whip them separately, okay? Remember that, as we saw in classes, this kind of biscuit is the preference is done by the separation method. And now we're going to start adding the sugar like a rain, okay? And we're gonna keep whipping this until, we, until it rises, okay? And it doubles its size. Okay, we have to make it in a medium speed, okay? And now we're going to start whipping to the egg whites. In this case, too, we're going to add a portion of sugar that says in the recipe and we're going to whip it into until it's doubling its size too. Okay, now when the bubbles start being formed, we we'll start adding the sugar as a rain and we're going to keep beating this until it's triple its size. Okay, we're watching that while it's getting beaten, it starts to have a white color. Okay. Now, if we do, you don't have those, uh, those two machines at home, what you can do is to whip the egg whites at the same time that you're whipping by hand the egg yolks. Or first of all, you can whip the egg yolks reserve, and after that you can whip the egg whites to join them together in the end. Okay, now at this point we're gonna stop uh, the mixers and we're going to show you the texture that it has, the egg whites. What we have this meringue that is the medium thick, okay? And 
as you can see here, you can see the change of color. You have some slightly uh, yellow color, almost white, as you can see in this video. And uh, the texture is really smooth. Now that we have this texture finished, we're going to join it together with the folding move, and after that, we're going to incorporate the dry ingredients. Okay, well, in this moment, we're going to incorporate the egg yolks into the egg whites. We're gonna uh, mix them with the folding move. Remember that this movement has to be really, uh, really uh, slow, okay? Because in this point, we don't want to lose the air we have incorporated, okay? So this is soft, but at the same time with rhythm, okay? This doesn't have to take more than one or one minute and a half to be incorporated all ingredients. Okay, as you can see, the texture is changing, okay? And now it's moment to incorporate the dry ingredients, and in this case, it's going to be the flour and the, the icy sugar. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Parece. Okay. Voy a grabar. Okay, no le puse pausa. No pasa nada. Dale, dale, dale. No pasa nada. Okay, after we moving around two or three minutes, we have this texture. The texture we're looking for here. As you can see, this has a hard texture. Okay. We're going to put it in the piping bag and we're going to serve it. But before this, we have to put a little bit of the mixer in the bottom of the tray to stick. Okay to stick the wax paper and it doesn't move when we put it into the oven. We serve it in the piping bag as the way we showed it before, okay? As you can see, the piping bag is all in the, in the hands. We make a little um, twist, okay? And we put it in the, in the inside of the, of the teeth and we place the piping bag in the hand. This is the right, the right way in which we're going to incorporate the mixer into that. Okay, now just observe the movement. We have to fill it, avoid it to have any kind of bubble inside. Now that we have it, we're gonna start serving it to make the clear shapes. It's a little bit uh, similar than when we did the eclairs. It is uh, the same kind of move. And we have to, if you want, you can make before it's to mark in the other side of the, of the, of the wax paper. You can draw some lines for you can have the, the better, uh, the better result in the shape and in the size that it's going to have in the end, all those clear biscuits. Okay, observe the movement. And as I told you before, this has to be really fast because we don't want uh, that this uh, cooler biscuit to start to extend in the tray. Okay, after this, we're going to sift uh, a portion of icing sugar on top. Okay, remember, as we told you, this has to be a fast move. Okay, we sift it to avoid some stones that it could have or crumbs. We gotta make sure to cover to cover well all the pieces we, we put in the in the tray. Okay. And after this, we're going to sprinkle a little of of custard uh, sugar, custard sugar, on top. This is going to bring us a uh, uh, croissant texture in the end. Okay. And um, once we sprinkle the sugar and all of those are ready to get into the oven. As you can see, it didn't take more than five minutes long to do this process. We're gonna be really fast. And in this moment, we're gonna take it in, into the oven and they're going to be there for around 12 to 15 minutes.
Now we have here a pot with hot water. Okay, now we're going to be uh, making the, the coffee punch for the tiramisu. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to add the granulated coffee. Okay, this is natural grain granulated coffee. And we're going to remove it. Okay, we're going to uh, cover with, uh, with film. And after this, we're going to let it rest for around five minutes. We're going to make an infusion that we're going to use to hydrate the biscuit that is going to have on bottom our preparation. Now we are going to prepare a pata bone. The pata bone is a technique to cook the egg yolks or whole eggs. It depends on the recipe you have to prepare. So uh, we are going to use, in this case, egg yolks. And we will cook with this a syrup at 170 degrees. So for this, for this, we are going to use sugar and water. Remember, you have to dissolve the sugar before to cook. That will give you uh, the opportunity to get a syrup and not a caramel. So we are going to cook um, maybe for five or seven minutes until get the texture and the temperature. At the same time, pour the egg yolks in a bowl and whip it with a whisk attachment at medium velocity until you get the triple of volume. This is gonna happen at the same time you prepare the syrup, so be patient. Now, uh, the patavon is a, is a technique to prepare something else. You don't prepare a patavon only to prepare. So in this case, we are going to prepare a mascarpone cream. For that, we have here mascarpone cheese and we have here a stabilized cream so I'm going to whip this cream without handle whisk but I need to show you three different kind of this this kind of whisk it's very very complicated to get volume in a mixture like a egg whites or cream don't use it you can use it to mix another kind of, of sauce even to prepare I don't know, um, guacamole, it works, but not to, but not to try to, to trap it air in a, in a mixture, okay? This is really soft, extremely soft. It's gonna be complicated. It's not impossible, but you, you need to try to get something more like this. If you see the, ha the hooks, the hooks, sorry, are thin than this. And it has a lot hooks than this. So the flexibility, the flexibility, it's, it's important, but it's not the most important thing, okay? So try to keep this kind of whisk. If you buy, or in this kind of utensil, it's probably you can, you can get for more than 10 years at home. So it's a good investment. So I'm going to start to whip it. So I will not show this before, I believe. So try to get, try to use a bowl. It's very, very important. And move in circle all the time. We will not try to give, to keep uh, or get uh, a hard texture. We are going to try to get a, a medium or even soft texture because this is a cream, okay? Okay, now, if you see, we have a different texture in the egg yolks, and now we are going to add the syrup. So, you need to be careful. It's constantly in a some kind of ribbon. With this, this uh, technique, we are going to cook our egg yolks. And immediately, you will have the 
Bloom gelatin, but remember, you have to dissolve. And be careful, because if you pour close to the wick, to the whisk, you will get some kind of, uh, of how do you say that, a seed. You have to pour in the mixture, in the rest of the mixture. So try to be careful when you add it. Hey chef, I don't have this kind of uh, uh, I don't this kind of mixer. What can I do? Okay, turn off the mixer, add the add the gelatin, and continue to whisk. Okay, or continue to whip it. Don't worry. I know not all of us we have this kind of utensils or. <laughs> mixers at home now i check the bowl if you touch the bottom of the bowl it's gonna be hot how can i know it's ready my my patabon when you touch you will feel the bowl warm and when it, it was warm it will be ready to add the rest of the ingredients okay now after three or five minutes you will get uh, the temperature I told you so turn off the mixture and you will see it's really really soft and smooth okay uh, we have here the mascarpone cheese and the cream it's this is remember it's a heavy cream we whip it until get a soft peaks and here we have the pata bomb you have to this is a very important thing remember you have to remember it has to be warm because it has gelatin and if you let um, call this mixture you will get a, gel a gelatin uh, egg gelatin so now the first thing you have to add is the cheese but we, not, we will not add all the cheese only one tier part or one tier the cheese to the mixture Okay, and remember the action you have to do is fold, fold the mixture. You'll see, we can see the texture you will get with the gelatin. Now, actually that changed the temperature too, and now we are going to add the rest of the cheese. Fold the mixture carefully. It doesn't matter. If you think, hey, the cheese is too dry, or maybe you you will get some crumbs of cheese, it's okay. It's normal. It's in this kind of cream, this is one of the textures you want to get. Hey chef, I don't have mascarpone cheese. Can I use Philadelphia? Uh, you can, but you don't. You don't have. You don't should to do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Okay. Now we are going to add the cream in one move, and at the same time, you will add the liquor. In our case, we are going to use amaretto, and this that will give more flavor to our cream. You'll see and it's almost ready mm. it smells really good yeah can you see the texture yes we have some crumbs but it's okay it's normal this is the kind of cheese you are using give the kind of cheese we are using give us this texture it's not the same have some crumbs in the in the mixture than we have a separate product okay
Okay, now we have uh, the biscuit coulier. This is the shape we will use it actually every time. It's the most popular shape. So, but in our case, we are going to, we are going to prepare a dessert. It's different and we are going to prepare a layer dessert with this ingredient. Okay, now we have here the Chantilly, uh, the coffee Chantilly cream, uh, the mascarpone cheese cream, the crumble, the coffee crumble, uh, the coffee uh, syrup, and we shape a tray of the biscuit coulia, and then I will I use it a ring cutter to get this shape. Okay, now it's very important. I uh, put a little portion of the biscuit on the bottom of the glass and I will add a little of coffee, little by little, because it really intends the flavor of this syrup, it's really intense, actually it's an, exp an espresso coffee. And if you see, the the biscuit extend the volume will start to rise with the liquid don't worry if you have some accident you only need paper to clean it okay so in this part we are going to add the cheese cream with a piping bag cover completely okay I will move a little the, the, the uh, cup and you will see here the first texture and we have the second textures here um, now we have we have the crumble or streusel and I will add a little well, probably you can add more than little. It depends on the chef. And you will have the, the third la layer. For the next layer, you can add another biscuit. That's an option. If you want it, you can add it. But I will add the coffee chantilly cream. Okay? Now, you can start in the middle and then follow on the rest and cover. Now, to finish, this is very important to remember. We, have, we want to shape uh, layers. So if we add more layers in this moment, it's gonna be a complicated to get the texture and the, and the difference a views in the in the cup so we are going to reserve this this um, this part of the process for until maybe maybe for 30 minutes and then we are going to follow to finish okay now to finish i cut another uh, ring of um, biscuit coulia with a bigger ring cutter or cookie cutter so you have to be careful in this part because this part of the of the glass or the cup is smaller than the than the bottom, so I'm going to fold a little to try to put inside. Okay? Yes, I did it. <laughs> now I'm going to add. Remember, the the bottom of the biscuit is gonna be on the top because the alveoles or the are bigger here and so it's, it's gonna be easy for the biscuit um, to absorb the, the syrup. Again, remember, this is espresso coffee, so it's probably you can add a little more than in the bottom or maybe less. I prefer to add less because this will give me another texture in the in my dessert. Now I'm going to finish. No, the next the next layer is gonna be again the cream. So take a little. I need a little. Give me a moment. 
Now, we, I'm going to use the uh, mascarpone cream and I will use the star tip to shape some drops. Be careful and take with this. And we will finish with a little of cocoa powder, powder on the top. Okay, now you can see the six different layers in this in this dessert. We have the biscuit coulier, then we have the uh, mascarpone cream. After that, we have we have the crumble, the coffee crumble, and the chantilly, the coffee chantilly. Then we add a, again an other uh, uh, slide or portion of biscuit coulier, and we finish with a cheese cream. So. This is the characteristics of one of this kind of dessert. So try to find a beautiful glass or cup to, to try to try this recipe at home. Okay? See you.